thank you so much. Yeah. It has been our intention to get things rolling for you people, um, and it just sort of hasn't happened till now. So I really appreciate this opportunity to bring some information to you, and I hope that as a result of today, uh, we'll be able to, you know, feel that you're a little more comfortable um, with some outdoor stuff and some scouting skills. So, um, tell me, is there anybody who has a problem with me speaking this fast in English? Can you understand me? Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. You're okay? That's All right, good. Um, well, I'm Scouter Eleanor. My official title is Area Commissioner for the North Shore, which is North Vancouver, West Vancouver. Um, you people have ended up as one of my groups because we wanted to link you with the 15th Capilano Rovers. Um, as I said, we haven't quite got that in place yet, but I'm hoping it will happen. Maybe on February 1st, when we do our cold prep for the preparation, how to prepare for camping out in the cold and the wet, which we'll be doing on the North Shore. Um, I have with me today Scouter Ismat, who is a cub leader, her daughter Jasmine, who is the cub, Scouter Craig, who is also a cub leader, and his son Noah, who is a scout with all of these people with the 15th Capilano. So we have in the 15th, we have all the sections that is. We have the beavers who are the little five, six, seven year olds. We have the cubs who are eight, nine, and 10. We have the scouts 11 to 14 years old. We have venturers who are the teenagers. And we have rovers who are the same age as you guys. And then a lot of our rovers have been in scouting ever since they were six years old. So they don't want to go elsewhere, they don't want to just drop scouting, and so some of our quote rovers, um, many of them are also leaders with the other sections, but some of them are in their 30s, some of them are in their late 20s. Scouts Canada says rovers are 18 to 26 years old, and after that to be in scouting you need to be a leader. Well, we never say to anybody, go, you can't stay any longer. We always say, stay and join us. So we have some age discrepancies, but that's okay. Because it's being part of a family, and that's what scouting is. We're all a family. We have fun together. We learn together. We get out and do things together. So that's what we want to bring to you today, is just learning how to be prepared for going out that door and doing stuff out there that's fun. So we're going to start off with um, hiking gear, and this can be, some of this will be for an extended hike of a couple of days, but the basics, even if you go for an afternoon hike for an hour or a couple of hours, the basics are here, and that's what we need to learn about. So I'm going to ask Jasmine if she'll start us off with... Um, so one of the important things about camping is knowing what you have so that you don't fit pack. So, like, sometimes I go to camp and I hear my friends say, I have no idea what I bring. And sometimes they pull out, like, a random pair of pants and they're like, what is this? Who does this belong to? It's not mine because they didn't pack their bag. Well, that's not good. You have to be able to know what's in your bag. And in this case, I do. You also have to pack your own bag so that you know where everything is. And you should be able to carry everything in your pack. Exactly what I do. Um, Why don't you now. put your pack here so that as you unpack it, you can Good. pass the stuff up to me and then... places like Mountain Equipment Co-op and um, Deacon Outdoors, places like that. We deal a lot with MAC. They're, MAC and Mountain Equipment Co-op co are very good supporters of scouting. They will provide you with handouts and information on packs. They will help to fit you with a pack and they will teach you about the different types of packs. The pack that she has is not one that I would carry. 
The pack that I have is not necessarily one that she would carry. Your pack has to fit you, fit your shape, fit what you can carry, and also fit what you want to do with it. There are different types of pack depending on what you want to do. You've got day packs, hydration packs, alpine packs, weekend packs, mountaineering packs. Your gear should be relative to what you are going to be doing. Okay? Now, now notice how, like, they say my bag is waterproof, but still I have a waterproofing, a plastic bag inside, so that if, say, I accidentally, like, say if the trail is blocked by a swamp and we're too tired to go around, sure, we can risk a few floats and we still so even if my bag is waterproof, I do this so that if the water gets in, I can still have warm clothes. And, and <coughs> hmm? I'm and gonna point out a few things. Yeah. Jasmine's been doing this for a while, so there's some things that she just does automatically and may not think to tell you about it. Mm -hmm. So I'll be interjecting here and there. Yes. Let's, um, let's move your pack a bit closer. Can we do that? Can we move a bit closer to you? Whatever's easier for you. If you want us to stay here so that we can the light. Okay. Um, she lined her bag with a garbage bag. That keeps everything inside. When she closes it, it's a twist and a tuck. It keeps your bag closed, but if you need to get in it, it's quick and easy. You're not trying to untie something. Yeah. Okay. Notice that I have everything. Pass it up to me so I can go over what's in them. Everything. Can I do this one? We'll, we'll set it all up here um, so she can see what's in there. In a plastic bag. Because even if I do have lots of like dry clothes and there's a waterproofing. If, like, say the waterproofing had a hole in it and so there's my bag, um, if I didn't have things like this, I would be, like, I wouldn't be able to do anything. So, this way, I have everything the way I want it. Nice and clean. Let's see if I have anything. I think that's all. Yep, that's all. Um, we can talk to the bag, too. Okay. And I have a sleeping bag inside my backpack. So that I don't have to carry an extra load. And, of course, my sleeping mattress. Now I'm going to talk about my sleeping mattress first. Never bring an air mattress to camping. Yes, Mom, thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Of course. And that is first um, aid bag or? Um, yes, the first aid bag. Um, there are different like levels of first aid, and I'm level one first aid. So my standard first aid kit contains of only what I need. Um, my mom has like everything from tiny bandages for like little pricks to pressure bandages and things for broken legs. I only have like cream and inch cream and stuff like that. I only have the tiny stuff, but she has the big duty. Mm -hmm. And this is my mom's first aid kit. Oh. She can carry a lot of compact in there. Um, anyway, I'm CPR it. trained, so I have a mask with me all the time. <laughs> sure, wait. Um, so yes. Uh, excuse me, Constructor. CPR, which stands for? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, artificial respiration. Okay. You've seen it on television, the um, heart pumps. Yeah. There's actually a procedure to do that. If it's incorrectly done you, and you don't know what you're doing, you can actually kill somebody. Below your breastbone, there's a little small bone that's hanging underneath your breastbone between your ribcage. That is very easily broken off. 
and it can puncture a lung. So it, you need to have training to do it. And this is like an advanced, sorry, this is like an advanced level of... Uh, Standard first aid will incorporate CPR as well as AED, which is artificial um, external defibrillation, which is using a machine. You see, you also see that on television, but it uses electrical impulses to restart a heart that stopped. That's definitely more advanced levels. First aid has different levels from basic first aid for children, um, bruises, cuts, scrapes, to um, dealing with breaks, concussions, uh, heart stoppages, shock, trauma, um, mountaineering first aid, wilderness first aid, again, is different. Emergency first aid is different than industrial first aid. There's different levels. And it's all done through um, the Red Cross or through St. John's Athens. And First aid kits are also available through them. You get a fairly good deal and, and they're also complete. One thing that I will talk mention in the first aid kit uh, that uh, is very important, for the group leader or whoever is carrying a first aid kit, you need to have a usage log and a pen. Write down everything that happens, everything that was used. It doesn't matter if it's a, a pin prick and you used a band-aid. Write it down for two reasons. One, you have a detailed record of what happened and two, you know what was used and has to be replenished. Okay. First aid kit doesn't come home and get put away without being checked and replenished. So the next time the next person that goes to get it is not taking something without realizing, gee, I used the last band-aid on my last trip. Okay. Now, as I was saying, this is way better than an air mattress. Um, air mattresses, they, sure, they elevate you, but the air inside of them gets cold. And... If there's a hole in them, you're pretty much leaking on a brook. You're pretty much the same bug being as sleeping on the floor by itself. So this has a foam, co a foam core to keep the air inside warm. It can still blow up and it can't get holes in it. So you can go get to prick it, but it doesn't get holes. Um, and notice that everything is in a plastic bag because if anything here gets wet on my bag, this won't get wet. Should I do the first aid kit or the clothes first? First aid kit I've already done. I mean, um, emergency kit or clothes. First. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you along just because we need to be mindful of our time. Okay, so okay. Um, she's Jasmine talked to you about the sleeping mat. Um, an, another this 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 one actually does not weigh very much, catch. Okay, it's very light. Her pack is something that she can manage. Okay, easily accessible in her pack, in the very top of the pack, accessible by her or by somebody march hiking with her, are the important things that need to be accessed quickly. And we'll go over what those are. In your outside pocket is your water, okay? I have water with me that I carry like this. You can get a little clip. This is just a regular water bottle and a clip that goes on it. You don't necessarily take your water bottle off because it has a on a carabiner. Many different types. You can get a camel bash, which is one, a backpack water bottle with a, a tube. So if you're going on a long hike, you can be drinking out of that. Hydration is really, really important. Keeping dry and warm is really important. The bottom line is if you are not prepared for your activity, if you are uncomfortable, cold, or missing essentials, you're not going to have fun. So you have to make sure that you have what you need, okay? The other type of sleeping mat, which you may have seen, is the one right behind you there, that blue foam, the insulated foam. Yeah. This one? The blue one. Oh, okay. Right? That's another, now that's a, a durable foam core as well. What it's doing is providing insulation between you and the ground. It's stopping the ground going through your bones, okay? Uh, it, it's contained in the uh, mattress. That one is inside this, yes. This one has the added benefit of also being able to have a little bit of air. This is kind of a fancier grade. Those are very inexpensive. This one's a little bit higher grade. Um, and this one she can use indoor camping, outdoor camping. Those are easy, portable, foldable, durable. Nothing can happen to them. Okay. This also has a little bit of a flotation factor. Jasmine's sleeping bag is a very light bag, but it is rated to minus five. So she can sleep outdoors with this and that, she will be warm. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can add a liner. If you need an extreme cold water, cold weather bag, they're they're found. You can find them. And they can weigh as little as this. Mm -hmm. That bag there is an older bag. It has 
an inner lining, an outer lining, and a plastic bivy sack. You can be sleeping in minus 40 in that and still be fine. But that, just that sleeping kit weighs as much as her entire pack mm -hmm. and bag together. Okay? So you have to think of the transportability factor as well. If you're going on horseback or, you know, you have a, a, a drive-in to a facility, yeah. fine. Yeah, but when you're on with, uh, like, as a pack pack, mm -hmm. that's if you're dog sledding into your area and you've, you've got a sled um, to pack your stuff in with, fine. You need to be relative. If you had to carry that too far, you'd end up putting it down. You need to be able to, to have what you, what you have has to match what you're doing and be enough without leaving you short. Okay? And um, the most accessible parts in the top here, easily accessible, she's going to cover over with you now. Um, can I get you to take your face off first? Okay, so important things. Emergency kit and emergency food. In this emergency kit, I have lots of things. I have a hooded poncho. I know I have lots of waterproofing. I have these waterproof, warm, but if I got like lost in the woods and night kind of fell, I could use this. And if my clothes got soaked, these are, this is a Thing that can keep you warm or dry. Can I look Jasmine? Jasmine? I'm sorry, you're doing an excellent job, yeah. but we need to be mindful of the time. So I'm going to have you to step in, okay? So I'm going to. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to go a little bit faster. What do you call it? This is an emergency blanket, okay? And and there's a reason for this. A hooded poncho. Um, goes over you and your pack while you're hiking. If you're hiking in the rain, you mm -hmm. and your pack will stay dry with this. Okay? Okay. If you don't That's have good. one, the garbage bag that you have, cut a hole for your head, cut a hole for your arms. That will also keep you dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other things in this kit that she's got, this emergency blanket, has not been open. Do you need to open it? I don't need to, but I'm going to so that you can see it. Don't worry, we won't hurt you. We have permits. We are prepared, just in case. We have permits. No, no, uh, you should not carry um, a knife unless you know how to use it. And there's different types of knives, which we'll talk about as well. All cubs at her age level have to have a knife permit before they can use it. Scouting for, has training for knives, axe, saw, uh, everything, right? And she also has a, a pocket permit that she's carrying. This is your emergency blanket. This has a number of functions. If you got lost, this is going to provide reflectivity to be seen, day or night. So in the daytime, it will reflect light. So if you're in a wooded canopy and you can't be seen by aircraft because of the tree coverage, this will reflect light and draw attention to you. Okay? At nighttime, yeah. it will reflect starlight. It will reflect the light from really? your fire. Wow. It will reflect anything. You anyway. can feel the texture. It's very light, but, but it, will, very, it very will generate warm. heat. What else can we do with this? Um, you can. <laughs> you can use this. Like, say it's really, really, really hot outside, too. You can also use this to keep you cool because it reflects the sunlight. As much as it keeps heat in, it will also keep heat away from you. You can use it to build a shelter. This is a walking stick. These are priceless. You, it will help you walk. Somebody falls down, helps you get them out. You can reach things. You can prop things up. You can build your shelter with it. You can stoke your fire with it. It gives you balance. Multiple you control. purposes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, so, so, so they're priceless. It's also a weapon. We don't necessarily want to show that it's a weapon. But it, it's it's a it's something that can be used for self defense. Self defense. Like against uh, you mean like against like uh, let's say uh, you're going uh, hiking. Okay. You're not in human territory anymore. You need to be prepared. Which is why when you are hiking, 
you need to keep everything bagged. The other reason for having everything bagged, you're welcome to keep this. Thank you so much. They're very hard to fold back up and stick with those little. <laughs> it's my contribution. Everything should be bagged. And this is not the food that you're going to cook and eat. Okay. This is what stays in your emergency kit, in your pack, somewhere down at the bottom of the pack. If you get lost, this is what will keep you alive. This is what Water and control. nourishment. And hopefully a little bit of knowledge about your surrounding foliage so you know what, how to forage, how to, what, what shoots and trees and leaves are edible, um, which, where to get water. Water purification tablets are something that can be kept in your kit as well. Okay. Do you consciously... Uh, pick up those items, like in order to provide you with uh, essentials? Everyone. This is for emergency if you get lost. This is not going to be your nourishment. We're going to show you how to cook at a campfire. Mm -hmm. Okay. I maybe, maybe, I mean, that, you know, should be specific type of yeah, I, like food, food stuff, or, or just something that can, food. something that can, yeah. that is individually wrapped, that can stay, um, that doesn't go bad. Mm -hmm. Chocolate is great, however, if it's too hot, it melts. Mm -hmm. Um, fruit leathers give you, so you want something that gives you high calorie, high energy. Uh, yeah. You're looking for calories, you're looking so, for, for fuel for your body. Uh, nuts, chocolate, Absolutely. stuff, stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, okay. yeah, okay? Keep it bagged, okay? Bagging is going to keep it safe and keep it from smelling. Anything that smells will attract wildlife, okay? Uh, of Including... Course, uh, there is the water and um, this one. Your water is here. Oh. Your water is in your pack. Mm -hmm. Your water is water purifi purification mm -hmm. tablets. Right. Mm -hmm. This has just I'm gonna put this has this has fruit roll ups, this has granola bars, she has chocolate in here. Mm -hmm. She has kid stuff. I wouldn't have this, I'd probably have fruit leathers and you know, maybe some nuts and seeds, mm -hmm. some dried fruit, that kind of stuff. Okay. Or is that just the same as the <laughs> granola bars are good. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they freeze, you can still eat them, you know, easily. Your toiletries, soap, and, soap is great, body wash is better. Okay. It's easier, it's contained, there's no wastage, you can use a small amount. Keep it bagged, even toothpaste and body wash and soap will attract animals because they can smell it. Even something that we think is odorless is not odorless for them. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So bagging is doing two things, it's keeping it clean and dry, it's keeping it from smelling. Double bag it. So no perfumes? Never. In the woods? No. And no hair dryers. No makeup. <laughs> no outlets. No computers. <laughs> and no outlets. <laughs> the trees don't come with their own power why, sauce. Why no computers? Because you can't plug them in anywhere. And you don't trees have don't have that. <laughs> I thought that maybe some radiation signals? No. Trees don't have power plugs. Yeah. So it's just added. No, it's just added. It's just added. very. Absolutely. I have to tell you, I was camp. I was. Um, My first camp, somebody bought a, a, a hair dryer and a curling iron. It's oh, a yeah. camp. <laughs> yeah, I was back roading, and we got stuck. There was a big, 16-inch diameter tree down across the road, and we had to um, get out the axe and chop it out of the way. So I said to my husband, "That's it. I'm buying a chainsaw." So we got home. I went down to the department store. I said, "I want a chainsaw." We we got stuck back roading with this big tree and it took quite a while with the axe. Oh, okay. So we want a chainsaw. And so the guy listened to all of this and he said to me, do you want an electric one? Okay. <laughs> and I said, absolutely. Every backwoods tree has a plug-in, right? <laughs> and he said, you want a gas one? <laughs> yes, I want a gas one. You know, it, and that's reality. There is no power out there. So your computer, if it runs on that little battery and solar cell, solar cell whatever, that's fine. But if you expect power, no, it's not there. Common sense is really not that common unless you know what you're doing. For people who have never been camping, mm -hmm. if your daily routine means doing your hair and putting on your makeup every morning, and I'm, I'm a girl, that's why I'm saying, oh, yeah, sure. okay, then, then that's what I'm going to take with me because when I get up in the morning at camp, I'm going to do my hair and makeup, right? You, you have to prepare yourself with knowledge as well as with your equipment, right? These um, are great to have, hand warmers. You can get hand warmers, foot warmers. You activate them by pressing them. They keep you warm for seven hours. You don't want to use them unless you need them. This is protection. This is protection. Emergency. Emergency. Now. Yeah. Jasmine has some bags. Jasmine has bags. Tell us what you're going to do with those. These bags are for a lot of things. Wait. 
Say my sock got wet and my boot got wet. I wanted to change my socks. I have socks. I changed them, my foot's all dry, but my boot's wet. I stick my dry foot in one of these and I stick it in my wet boot and wait until I can build a fire to dry out my socks and... This is for your like boots or... No. Yeah. Plastic bags can be used for a, a oh. multitude of things. Always have empty plastic bags. If you get wet, you should always have extra changes of clothes. If you're uncomfortable, if you are cold and wet, you cannot be comfortable. If you're uncomfortable, you have reduced risk of survival if you're in a survival situation. And you have less chance of having fun if you're in a fun situation. Okay? If your socks get wet, change them right away. But if your socks are dry and your boots are still wet, as soon as you put your wet foot into your boot, it's going to get wet again. If you put your foot into a plastic bag first, then put it into your boot, your socks will stay dry. So it doesn't matter if your boots are wet. Okay? Also, your wet socks have to go into a plastic bag so everything else in your pack doesn't get wet. You have to layer your clothing. When you will run out of time, Sorry. Sorry. We'll do that with time. When you pack, you should always be layering, okay? Layering is very important. This type of fabric is called wicking fabric. It should be what's close to your skin. It whips. It whips. takes water away. away from you. So even if you are soaking wet, you will it will keep dry. the heat in until you can okay. dry yourself. I can't imagine. It does. Have you ever been scuba diving? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You wore a wetsuit? Yeah. Yeah. Were you wet inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were wet inside, right? Inside, yeah. But, but you were warm. Yeah. The, the material of the suit, it's the same as even though you're wet, it creates an insulating area. This fabric will wick the cold away from your skin and keep you warm. Fleece is excellent. Fleece and wool, socks, should be wool, not cotton. Cotton kills. Cotton absorbs water and keeps you cold. Fleece keeps you warm even when it's wet. So does wool. The more layers you have, the more you control your temperature. Because you can add layers to stay warm, you can take off layers to cool down. So the first layer is the this is always your inside layer, underneath your pants and your shirt. You can get undergarments. You can call it a uh, wetsuit? This no. is not a wetsuit. It's called dry wear. Dry wear. Dry wear. Mm -hmm. you, you go to the dry outdoor wear. store and you, call, you ask for dry wear undergarments. And they are like in short sleeves? Short sleeves, long sleeves, short pants, long pants, but long underwear, everything. The product that you can buy in that line is, is called Under Armour. Okay. okay? But there are other products out there that with a different trade name that do exactly the same thing. Like what I'm wearing right here. Okay. And what Jeff is showing you that. Okay? Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with this. <laughs> Needs no explanation? How about uh, this one? Uh, I think... Uh, that's this one is... If you're taking this, after take this. If you're not taking this, take this anyway, because you're going to need to use these. <laughs> Okay. One, one thing you must remember, which is quite important, is the toilet paper is just a small amount. Even if you've got a group of kids or a group of guys and you're going hiking for just, let's say, a four-hour hike, whenever you change elevations, you've had breakfast and your body is working and you're moving, and you're going up like five, seven hundred feet or a thousand feet and you're hiking, believe me, there's going to be one of you that has to go to the bathroom. Okay? Take the toilet paper. Goes in your pack no matter what, whether you use it or not. Okay. Take Easy it. access at the top. It doesn't matter if you're going for a day trip, a, a, a four hour hike, or a 12 hour hike. It's almost like. Yeah, for a 24 hour hike. You have to have it with you. Okay? Um, uh, your waterproof outer layer does not stay waterproof forever. Okay? There are materials that you can buy. You can wash it in or spray it on to keep it waterproof. Mm -hmm. So even if you have waterproof clothing like ski wear, it still needs, the waterproofing still has to be replenished after a few uses or I after a few washes. You mean I have Caleb's experience. coat? You see Caleb's coat right there, right, that he has? You can use that material on that material, right? Wash it, soak it in a tub, take it out, drip dry it, and that will increase its water uh, resistance. Okay, There's a couple of other things. You should always have, if you've got a big pack like that, 
If Jasmine wants to leave her campsite for a day, she should have a small day cap as, pack as well. This is actually a backpack like this, but it folds up this small. So if she wants to just go for a day hike, if you're going for a 10 day hike, you've got a lot of equipment, you just want to go for a day hike, even when you leave your campsite for an hour or two, you take the essentials. You take your emergency kit, you take your first aid kit, you take your water, and you pack it in something small like this. Okay. Okay. Back to, uh, to what you were saying, sir. Uh, why would, would he take out his, uh, let's say, jacket? Why he would uh, soak it and uh, wash it? At, because after it's a while, water. after you've been out for hiking and using it for a few days, days um, when you get back yeah, from yeah. that trip, treat it again. Okay. Okay. That's why you're flushing. Because if you keep no, using it, it, it stops <laughs> being waterproof <laughs> after a while. It's been oh, okay. Nim, nim just, wax. Just when you go to Mountain Equipment Co-op. You ask for the waterproofing, okay. just water repellent. One is one is a wash. You actually put it in your laundry machine, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and one is a spray that you can spray on. Okay. A couple of other things that Jasmine does not leave to go camping with: a compass oh, no. and a whistle. Mm -hmm. There's different types of compasses. There is an entire section on the website on orienteering on how to use a compass. This is a cartography one, so you can actually put it on a map. And this is just a directional compass. Mm -hmm. Simple. Okay? Have you seen these chamois? They demonstrate them on TV? Sham wow. Just a second, let me think. Um, this, this is a material. This is big enough to dry her. Okay. Okay? okay? Something else. If her clothes get wet, you roll your clothes up in it, you wring it. It will help to dry your clothes faster. This dries very quickly, exactly. These dry very quickly. They absorb a lot of water and they hold the water. Okay. Jasmine has something else in but her. Why wouldn't you take a towel instead? Because it's, it's not going. Yeah. How, how much? How big is your bath towel? <laughs> that that big, maybe. A bath towel. Okay. And how much does it? How long does it take to dry when it gets wet? That will dry ten <laughs> times faster than a towel. <laughs> if it gets wet, it's going to stay wet. That material will dry ten times faster than a towel. And you can also use it to dry other things. You can wring it out, and it's, you can use it again right away. Whereas a towel, when you wring it out, it just stays wet. Right? That you can use even when it's wet and it'll still... It's still dry. Yeah. If you are taking a knife with you, you need to have something to sharpen it with. It doesn't matter if it's this type of sharpener. You can have the, the stick sharpeners or the traditional way of oil and stone. Okay? You can't survive if your knife, which is your tool, is not sharp enough to use. Okay. A, dull, a dull knife will hurt you. Make sure your knife is Does sharp. anybody smoke? Not me. Oh, okay. I guess. If you have smokers in your group, you need to take something that will keep your, to, your butts, your, your used cigarette butts in. Scouts practice leave no trace camping. You take only pictures, leave only footprints. That means you don't leave anything behind. Whatever you carry in with you, I like to carry the fruit leathers and stuff because whatever, if you eat a granola bar, you bring that wrapper back out with you. You don't leave it in the woods. Everything that you take in, you take back out. So if you're carrying a lot of stuff that creates garbage, if you're getting a lot of tin cans and stuff, you're going to bring all those back out with you. Okay? There's another part of Leave No Trace Camping, which is lighting a fire. Actually, Jasmine, do you want to start uh, prepping some kindling, some kindling for me while I finish this up? Sure.